Hi, I'm Faisal Khan, Cisco Collaboration Instructor at Voice Bootcamp. In this video, we're going to talk about high availability. Now, high availability are one of the most important topics when you're designing and architecting Cisco Collaboration Solutions. There are two types of high availability supported by Cisco, a one-to-one -one ratio or two-to-one ratio. Then the nodes should be deployed in a high available infrastructure. Use of dual power supply combination of uh, combined with uh, you know, external UPS source will provide maximum power availability. You want to ensure that your platform servers are, should be connected to multiple upstream switches that in case if one switch goes down, you have a backup switch to provide layer two connectivity. You should at least use two trivial file transport protocol servers, such as TFTP servers, should be deployed in a fully redundancy. In case one goes down, you have a second one to provide backup. Now, call processing nodes, which uh, uh, nodes should be deployed with either one-to-one -one or redundancy or two-to-one redundancy, depending on your uh, environment. Now, high availability one-to-one -one ratio. In this topic, we're going to discuss the uh, options that are available uh, to you that will help you in case to make sure that you have redundancy and full fault tolerance. So, especially in case where you might have a failure. Now, two, uh, two, uh, but two possible uh, uh, during an upgrade process where one of the servers is unavailable, you should have a, a you know necessary server to to provide continued backup because you don't want a downtime when an upgrade is taking place. So let's have a look at a few examples of how we would go about and doing this high availability. There is uh, really uh, two major design that we have available to us in our uh, design, which is one to one and one two to one ratio. So the diagram here you see in a one to one ratio, you have you can design your solutions based on the 10,000 uh, deployment model or 20,000 deployment model or 40,000 deployment model. So if you're designing a network for let's say 5,000 or 7,000 or you know, 2,000, then you want, may wanna go with the 10,000 deployment model OBF template. Now, of course, uh, Cisco recommend you always have a room for growth. So just in case if you have some sort of problem or increased capacity needed, you should have that option. Now, I understand that there may be different size or types, but it is simple one to follow. If we keep the numbers quite simplistic for this purpose, uh, we are going to use 10,000 deployment model as an example. Now, we've got a scenario of with 20,000 phone and scenario with a 40,000 phone in your cluster. Now, one of the things that I want to highlight when we start with this 10,000 phone design, as soon as the network has more than 1,250 phones. So, so the recommendation is that if your requirement is to get 1,300 phones, then you should always use a 10,000 OVF template. If not, if it is below 12,000 to 1,250, then you probably want to go with the business edition of the call manager as opposed to full-fledged uh, uh, call manager solutions. Now, meanwhile, I mean, um, you also should have a dedicated TFTP server for uh, you know redundancy purposes, meaning that it's not going to be running a call. Uh, so the dedicated TFTP server should not be running the call manager service because its function should be only one thing: is to provide TFTP services. Here, example, for example, on the ten thousand deployment, you will see that I got publisher and TFTP server running on one server, and then for the phone, I have two additional server where one is acting as a primary and one is acting as a backup. So in this scenario, the phones will register to the primary server, and if the uh, primary server it will um, it will communicate with the primary server every thirty second through via Keep Alive. If uh, the primary server does not respond within 30 seconds, then the phone will unregister from the primary and re-register to the subscriber backup server. Now, primary server does not necessarily mean that it is a publisher, although it could be. But technically, you want to keep publisher out of your call processing uh, functions. You want to keep it for only one, uh, one or two things. It could be just acting as a database uh, uh, maintenance server uh, or master database for server and TFTP. But even then, for a very high availability environment, you want to offload the TFTP service to a separate server. 
Now for redundancy point of view, TFTP server should be defined, uh, definitely have a second TFTP server for an extra redundancy. Our discussions here, uh, here really from a scalability point of view uh, is once you cross the thrust toll of 1,250 phones. It is no longer uh, a good idea to have a TFTP server co-resident with a call manager for high availability because you're still pointing to single point of failure. So it is that thrust toll that we, re we really should split the function of TFTP server. So as soon as you go over 1,250 phones, then you want to isolate or separate the TFTP to a separate dedicated server uh, and keep the publisher uh, separate as well. Now again, for fault tolerance, we should all should look at having two of these servers to allow TFTP functionality. Now for publisher point of view, there can only be one publisher in a new environment. So it doesn't really matter whether it doesn't matter whether it's a 10,000 phone or 20,000 phone or 40,000 phone. So in either cases, each each will have a dedicated uh, a publisher uh, for each cluster. Now you can have many uh, subscribers, that is perfectly fine. But when it comes to uh, publisher uh, perspective, is only one per cluster. Now you cannot promote a subscriber to publisher, but the subscriber will usually have a a read-only copy of your publisher databases. Okay, so now there are backup select uh, options. So uh, if you have, depending on the design, you may have one backup for per uh, group of you know call processing device. So the requirement is that. Uh, if we have a uh, 10,000 phone and or they're all registering to these top servers, then we have another 10,000 phone over registering as to this primary server. If either of these server crashes, then we will have a problem with our environment. But as long as one of these services has failed or is the process of upgrading to whatever version, that uh, the service should uh, fail over to the secondary server, should, which should be able to handle the full load from your primary. Now, when it comes to uh, deployment model, Cisco Unified Communication Manager supports uh, multiple type of deployment model. Uh, but before we go into that, let's talk about some of the components of high availability. So first one we're gonna look at high availability is a failover redundancy. Now failover redundancy is offered by clustering concept. Clustering is where you have a publisher and up to 20 subscribers. Now, probably only eight of them that, that can do call processing. Redundant link, you should always have multiple one link if you are going to design a high availability network because imagine you design and spend millions of dollars on your high availability, but you only have one single internet connections or WAN connections to your branch office. Well, what good is that environment or availability if that one link goes down? So you wanna make sure your server link is redundant. You also want to make sure that you have geo geographical diversity, geographical diversity, meaning the distribution of the servers to multiple locations. So you may want to put publisher in head office, uh, then subscriber A, which is a primary on head office, and subscriber B might be in a separate data center close to head office or maybe another branch office, and you know use them as a backup options. So you need to think about this stuff before you start to deploy your clusters. Now, when it comes to capacity planning, one of the things we always talk about is called site-based uh, design. So what is considered to be site-based design? Site-based design is basically focuses on how big of the call manager size. Size generally don't re refer to the number of uh, hardware or big, how big your hardware is. Size generally refers to the number of users that you have deployed. Now that could be IP and use, which would usually translate into IP phone, voicemail, presence, and so forth, so on forth. Network connectivity is another most important thing. You want to make sure that you have a redundant link. Okay, you have make sure that you have a bandwidth. Make sure that the link does not provide high latency. Uh, it's reliable. In case one network goes down, you should always have a redundant link. Uh, link. Now, addition of high availability. You got bandwidth, uh, bandwidth reliability is very important. I mean, if, if you do not have proper bandwidth from your ISPs or service providers, that may affect your voice quality. 
You also want to make sure power availability in, in case if one uh, grid goes down, you should have a second grid, you know, uh, distribute your power. Either you can load balance or do fault tolerance, totally up to you. Environmental factor is also another issue. Like for example, heat, uh, if your data center get heats up so fast, server might, you know, shut down. Some of these servers are very uh, smart these days, so they have a sensor or some sort of readings inside their motherboard. And if the temperature reach certain level, it will either shut down the machine or reboot it. You also want to look at humidity, vibration, and so forth. And last but not least is availability of qualified personnel. You can have the million dollar design, but if you don't have a proper qualified engineers to maintain that, then you're going to get the result based on their experience level. Now, the, once you have taken care of that, then you start to decide what model do you want to use. Single site deployment model, which is often known as the campus. In a single site, everything is located in a physical location in your data center on premise. You will have 40,000 IP phones, depending on you know, various design uh, concept. Maximum of um, 2100 gateways. You could have DSPs located in the same location. Because everything is centralized and everything is in one office, you get to choose to use, let's say, one single codec that can be high toll quality, such as G.711. Now, that is single site where everything is location, no branch office. You may use the WAN for voice call for SIP trunking. But whereas single site, uh, where multi site WAN with a single uh, centralized call processing is basically uh, the call manager single site in head office, but you have a branch office. So you will have one or two branch office. They will use the WAN to register to your call manager clusters. Now, these uh, in the head office, still a single site. So same restriction of life, 30,000 to 40,000 phone, 2,000 gateways, 1,100 of trunks, and so on and so forth. But when it comes to uh, branch office, they will use the WAN to communicate with central offices. You could use call admission control to location number of calls going to your branch offices. You can restrict how many, uh, either using RSVP or call admission control. In case of location not having enough bandwidth, you could use alternate route, uh, sync, route alternate um, AAR, automate alternate route, which means that if the WAN link goes down, or what, sorry, not that goes down, if the WAN link does not have enough bandwidth, the call will take the PSTN and reroute it to the site. You could use SRST for survival remote site telephony. If the branch office lose connection to the router, you could register across the PSTN and still to the PSTN uh, local router and then call the head office across the PSTN. So that is called multi site one with centralized call processing. Then you have multi site with a distributed call processing. Multi site with distributed call processing means every location have their own single cluster and they're all connected to each other with a SIP trunk or a session management edition, which is also SIP trunk. So in this scenario, every location have their own dedicated class cluster. So either the cluster is single site or multi-site centralized call processing, such as a second option. They will all be independent of their own, but they can all talk to each other via a third-party device called, uh, not third-party device, third-party cl third cluster known as the SME. The recommendation is that if you're going over three or more clusters, you should use the session management edition to uh, route calls between the clusters. Now, multi-site with distributed call processing characteristics is that you can still, you're still restricted to 30 to 40,000 phone, 1,100 gateways and every night, but to communicate one, one location to another location, either you have a direct SIP, some sort of trunk between the clusters, or you can go to via SME uh, call manager, and then from there you can communicate with other devices. Now, if you distribute the servers across multiple sites in a single cluster, such as you could have publisher located in head office in Toronto, where subscriber could be sitting in New York, uh, Manhattan. Uh, that's okay, not a problem, but you need to keep in mind that this distance between Toronto office and New York office cannot be more than 80 milliseconds. So if the both server is beyond 80 milliseconds, then the server will not be able to synchronize the database and therefore they will be out of sync and information may not be updated when you make changes to your publisher 
because it will not be able to update the subscribers due to the distance. All right, now session management edition. Very, very uh, unique tools from Cisco. It's basically a call manager cluster with no phone registered. It's a cluster with the SIP trunk from point A to point uh, to itself. That's all it is. You can run SIP trunk, you can run MGCP, you can do aggregated PSTN, centralize your dial plan. All can be done using session management edition. So when do you, what other connectivity in session management edition? Mostly trunks. Whether the voice trunk, video trunk, MGCP, doesn't matter. They're all basically trunk. No endpoint between them. So when do you deploy a session management edition? Usually when you need to create and manage centralized dial plan or when you want to provide centralized PSTN where all the PSTN connections are in the SME, everybody will use their local SIP trunk to talk to SME. From there, it can then use those SIP trunk to send the calls wherever it needs it. Now, as a session management edition is exactly the same software as a call manager, except it is designed with large number of trunk, no endpoint registered to it. So when you do any cluster across the WAN, always keep in mind the delay, jitter, packet loss, bandwidth, and QoS. These are very important uh, things to pay attention to when you're deploying uh, clustering across the WAN. Delay should be minimum less than 80 milliseconds. A jitter should be as low as possible. Packet loss should not be more than 1%. Bandwidth should be an, a provision enough to handle all your traffic. And last but not the least, quality of services. Cisco UCM redundancy. Uh, redundancy is achieved by creating call manager group. You can have up to 20, I believe it's 21 call manager servers in your cluster, but out of that, one server is your publisher, remaining server remains subscribers. The remaining server, uh, only eight of them can actually do call processing. So out of 20 or 21, I believe has changed to 21 now, eight call manager that can actually do uh, register the phones and can process the calls. So you can control that using a uh, lab, uh, call manager group, where you can provide, uh, you can create multiple group, where each group have three maximum call manager server, publisher, sorry, primary, secondary, and tertiary. So the phone will register to the uh, call manager via, and via the device pool, it will obtain the call manager group that it's supposed to belong to. Based on that group, you will then decide how many servers are going to be in that particular group and whichever server is in the top of the list will be used to uh, register the phone then second server will be backup third server will be acting as a tertiary server so from the phone to the primary uh, server of uh, active call manager is usually 30 milliseconds keep alive if the server does not respond in 30 milliseconds it will go to the secondary now, second uh, phone to the secondary server is usually 60, 60 seconds keep alive. If the secondary server does not respond in 60 seconds, it will mark, uh, it will make the tertiary server a secondary. But the tertiary server, there is no keep alive. Every, uh, so keep alive is between the primary and the uh, secondary servers. All right, so that's the overview about your high availability. Keep in mind that not only you need to look at the type of design, but then there's a size, bandwidth, QoS, delay, all these things has to keep in mind. It has to be considered when you're deploying your Cisco collaboration solution. All right, so that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you got an idea about what high availability is and what to look for. And I will see you in the next subsequent video.